Riddle me this. What's got black and white stripes and braids like a donkey? The answer, a zonkey. Yeah, that's actually a thing. His name is Zippy, and it's no wonder. Look at him go. Zippy is what you get when you literally cross a donkey named Raj and a zebra named Ziggy. Let's start with Raj. He's quite playful, quite noisy, but he's got a really kind nature, so yeah, he's a lovely character. Here at Trackside Farm in Somerset, England, six-year-old Raj runs the show. The only male donkey in the field, he's got his pick of eight females. He also gets daily pampering and as much fresh green grass as his heart desires. But when this sleek set of stripes walked into his world, everything changed. Meet Ziggy, the zebra. Native to the African savanna, Ziggy was born in captivity in Germany. Unwanted and without a home, Christine managed to get her over to the UK under a government license for dangerous wild animals. It's legal to own a zebra in Britain, but not exactly advisable. She was very wild when I got her. Couldn't get near her or anything like that, but I've um, got her very friendly, she trusts me, and we've formed a really good relationship. There's still moments when she'll suddenly spook and jump. <laughs> So you've got to be very careful still, you know, you can't forget that she is a wild animal. Since Ziggy's arrival, Prince Raj hasn't displayed too much interest in getting to know his exotic herd mate. Or maybe that's what he'd have you believe. For two years, they've pretty much minded their own business. But one day, Christine noticed Ziggy was a bit off. I noticed that she was acting a little bit different. She wasn't running around quite so much. She had had gone just a tiny little bit calmer. And then one morning, to her absolute shock, Christine found that Ziggy had given birth. As it turns out, it's actually extremely rare for a zebra to breed successfully with a donkey. The two animals have a different number of chromosomes, which means embryos usually fail. But nature has its strange ways, and as a result, Zippy, the zonkey, entered the world. Animal hybrids are highly controversial, often raised purely for profit. Many suffer birth defects, and others become difficult to handle, which is why mixed species like Zippy should never be the goal. But here he was, a healthy little tyke, and here he'll stay, a life on the farm. So how does a zonkey do? Zippy is definitely more zebra than donkey. He is a little bit more, you know, sketchy of things and noises, whereas a donkey is so relaxed and laid back, and he is so strong. So when I'm leading him, if I was to take him down the road or around the yard, it would take a couple of us to hold him. Zippy gets his stripes from his mom, but his uh, energy from his dad. Zippy is really cheeky. He's starting to get a little bit brandy. He will start chasing the other donkeys. You can certainly see he's maturing a little bit. Donkeys reach sexual maturity around two years old. Zebras, not until six years. Wait, Zippy's not even a year old. Not to worry though. As with most hybrid animals, this killer crossover is almost certainly sterile. Still though, Christine's gotta keep an eye on Raj and Ziggy to make sure their odd animal friendship doesn't result in more zonkeys. Zippy is plenty. A pair of Dalmatians and a zebra. Wait, but how and where does that kind of thing happen? At the Free to Be Wild Rehab Center in Zimbabwe, where baby orphaned animals are rescued and given a second chance at life. Let's start with the spotted sisters, Indigo and Bindi. This is Indigo. She's got one blue eye, uh, or an indigo-colored eye, and her sister, Bindi. Indigo is really sassy, yeah? She's a real madam. And Bindi is the gentle, friendly giant of the two. They were rescue puppies from a puppy mill. Their mum, we believe, was forced to breed over 170 puppies. I'd say that was to make money purely out of the fact that they're Dalmatians. And here we thought 101 was excessive. Centuries of intensive breeding to create that distinctive spotty coat 
has led to an unfortunate genetic condition that affects almost a third of all Dalmatians, hearing loss. This is Indigo here, and she can't hear anything. Hello? <laughs> Hello. She's stone deaf, um, and her sister is half deaf. A life without nature's sweet soundtrack sounds rough, but not to worry, Joe has his ears perked. They'll be by his side for life, which isn't the case for most of the animals who pass through here. Like their black and white striped best mate, City Boy, the zebra. About a year or so ago, this beautiful bud was found wandering the bush alone after his mother had been killed by lions. He was only a few days old when some kind folks found him and called Joe for help. For us, there was no option. They phoned us and they said, would you help with City Boy? So we don't really think about it. We just say, absolutely. We get in the car and we go there and we grab him. He was only about yay high and so big in the beginning. City Boy and the sisters quickly struck up a friendship and filled their days with running and playing. They must have found something special in common. Either that or they just dig each other's fashion sense. I don't know what you call them, a herd or a pack, uh, but uh, spots and stripes, they really, really enjoy each other. I don't think there's anyone else that we could take with City Boy on a walk like this. Fun fact, Dalmatians were originally bred to accompany horse-drawn carriages in 18th century Britain, where speed, stamina, and calmness around horses were the main requirements. So it's no surprise that their skills play well with a zebra, too. With the help of the pups, City Boy's gaining some confidence, which will one day lead to his independence. Eventually, he'll roam free in a 17,000 acre private reserve, maintained by Joe's family. The more time he can spend in the wild, the more acclimatized he'll become to the wild and the easier the transition will be for him. The more time they spend in the natural environment, the better. Full stop, without doubt. Same for all animals. Speaking of all animals, turns out the Dalmatians have a way with more than just zebras. The latest orphan that came in was a baby common diker. They said it was found in the bush. Often that's the case, they say it was found, but nine times out of 10, the mother's been hunted and then the people feel bad when they do find uh, the orphan. Many rescued orphans die of stress. If he's gonna keep this baby alive, Joe's gonna need backup. We've realized that the best thing to make that orphan feel comfortable is introducing it to Indigo and Bindi. They really seem to settle it down. If you can get them to relax and try and interact with another species that's already living there and settled there, I really believe that animals can pick up on that vibe. The confused little one thinks Bindi might have some milk on hand. Here's my bottle. Nope, only love. It's all good, Joe's got a bottle. I don't think we've had one orphan that's taken badly to them. We've got other dogs and we can't do it with other dogs. We only use these two dogs. If you see the Dalmatians interacting with the orphans, you can see the maternal instinct coming out in them. But if you see them interact with City Boy, it's more of a, a friendship and it's more of an equal. And we're in this together. The teenager is testing the waters of adulthood, evidenced by his clear curiosity. The time for him to move out on his own is approaching fast. You can't put a price on that feeling of the animal going free into its natural environment and where it's supposed to be. Till that day comes, there's still time to squeeze in a couple more rounds of Spots versus Stripes. <laughs>